wanted to ask you about um, what Vikram was like as, as a brother, as a person outside of the legal context, because everyone speaks very highly of him. Vikram is eight and a half years younger than me, and I apologize, I can't do past tense yet. Uh, and I think eight and a half years, boy and girl, it's difficult that you are best friends. But Vikram is, is my best friend. Being a lawyer meant everything to Vikram. He wasn't a very great student to start off. And uh, he, after repeating his O-levels, wanted to do the diploma law course. And we said, no, it's too early to decide. Doesn't look like, you know, law school is cut out for you. But he was determined. He went on to do private A's, came back, still did the diploma long, law course. And that's the first time he excelled. Suddenly this boy, from the bottom rungs is top of the class. He lived, ate, breathed, talked the law. When um, Sanjeev came for the funeral and then people were whispering that, I think since there was a huge collection of lawyers, they were trying to see what they could possibly do for the very distraught family. And I think, yeah, I, I, I was hearing whispers that day that no, don't be so upset. We'll see what we can do. We'll try to work on this because he was supposed to be called nine days later. And um, when you first heard about the successful outcome and the fact that it's the first one in Singapore, well, how did you feel? I want to say that I was very delighted. And part of me was. But part of me feels it's very bittersweet because, yes, we have call, maybe we'll have call papers, but to what end? But yet, if Vikram could make history in his short life, I know he'd have loved it, gotten such a cheap thrill out of it. <laughs> and he'd be delighted that his name is on the rolls forever. And definitely in some small part of legal history in Singapore forever as well. So that gives us strength that he lives on. Vikram was supposed to join us as a class fellow Class fellows join us for a period of one year and um, they work on criminal cases mostly. And Vikram was due to join us uh, sometime in 2021 whenever he got called. And so I became involved because Vikram had actually joined us for about a month uh, as an intern prior to joining us as a fellow. He wanted some experience doing class cases and we thought that it would be good for him to come in, see how we work, so that when he joined us subsequently, he could hit the ground running. Um, and in that one month that he was with us, he worked very closely with me. In fact, he sat right beside me. And uh, we um, became good friends, actually. I felt like I, I had known him for some time. And um, it became very clear that he was very passionate about criminal law, very passionate about helping people. And what really stuck out for me was that he was so... Um, kind towards the applicants. He was able to connect with them uh, very easily and um, it, it just showed how genuine and how big a heart he had. Unfortunately, he, he passed on about 10 days before he uh, got called as a lawyer and that was his dream. And it was really the last thing that um, he was doing before he passed on, which is he was fighting to get called. He wanted to become a lawyer as soon as possible. And I spoke to a senior lawyer in the fraternity, Sanjeev Rajan, um, and I asked him, is there any way we could have uh, Vikram called? Because this was something he was uh, fighting so hard for. And, you know, that man just is sheer force and willpower. You know, he, 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 he um, called me a few days later and told me that things were already in motion. And uh, he told me to hop on board because we are going on a crazy ride because we are making an unprecedented application in Singapore. It's never been done before. To have someone who has passed on admitted as a lawyer, uh, um, you know, as an advocate and solicitor of Singapore. I, I met Vikram a few weeks before he passed on uh, in the state courts as well. He was assisting uh, Ramesh Tiwari, his uncle, on some matter. And he was talking to me about um, how he would be joining LSPBS once he's, he's called as a CLAS fellow. My role uh, was working with uh, some of my younger lawyers, Seema and Samuel from the firm, um, together with Satna and, and an external group of 
volunteers to get the research done, um, to get the submissions drafted. Given that they were joint submissions also with the Law Society, we worked closely with Greg. So, um, we received the news, the very sad news that uh, Vikram had passed away. Um, we knew his uncle, uh, Mr. Ramesh Tiwari, and, um, and of course, condoled him. And, uh, and uh, his father is also senior lawyer. Then, uh, through interactions with uh, Sanjeev and uh, also with uh, Ramesh Tiwari, um, I'd heard about this intention to consider a posthumous call. This wasn't just about compassion and mercy. Uh, that will only take you so far. We must have um, a legal basis or a juridical basis. So let's talk a bit about the process of actually getting him called. Um, and you've been in contact with lawyers internationally to get this to happen, right? Um, and so I'm curious about what it was like reaching out to these people and you know, how they responded. Yeah. This is the most uh, amazing and I would say heartwarming part of, of this entire endeavour. Um, when we first started this application, we, we were a bit lost, I feel, because uh, this was an unprecedented application. It wasn't something that had been done in Singapore before. And we were looking to other jurisdictions and we managed to find a few uh, newspaper articles, but not very much information on how the applications were made. And so I remember talking to uh, my CEO about this and he said, we have a resource. We have international lawyers you can reach out to. These are volunteers who are willing to volunteer their time to help us. Why don't you reach out to them and see what they can do? Much to my surprise, the replies came in like, um, they were fast and furious. You know, we got eight, nine people replying, telling us, tell us what you need. We want to help you. And I can't tell you how much my perspective changed the moment I received these messages because it just reminded me that there are so many people out there that want to help, you know. Um, they may not know who Vikram is or was as a person. They may not know the struggles that his family, you know, are going through, but they are willing to, to step forward and to make this happen. I was actually very moved by what Sada, Satna actually wrote in her email, which is that um, it was, it, it looked like it was a joint initiative, um, you know, where it, it would involve Law Society, you know, the, the Pro Bono Services Office, um, but also many other uh, practitioners and also in-house counsels from different organizations um, coming together to carry out legal research spanning different jurisdictions. So it wasn't just a Singapore um, based effort. It would involve case law research and even reaching out to the bar admission institutes across, you know, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the US, um, India, Malaysia, to say, to name a few. And um, in my line of work, you know, I have had the opportunity to, in a way, coordinate such global projects um, out of Singapore. Speaking to a few of the other lawyers who were involved in this, um, they, they mentioned they were very surprised by how um, like forthcoming people in other jurisdictions were um, in, in helping with your research. Was that something you found as well? A hundred percent. You know, it wasn't a case of that. We needed to explain a lot. Um, it almost seemed like everybody was just working off a common purpose. This whole thing has a lot of symbolic significance. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if it made you think about what it means to be a lawyer or prompted you to reflect in any way on your own? Yeah, yeah, it absolutely did. Um, you know, I, I, I genuinely feel that this is perhaps one of the most meaningful things I've ever done in my entire legal career. Um, I'm wondering if your research in this area and then also maybe helping with Vikram's case um, has made you reflect on what it means to be a lawyer and to be called to the bar. Uh, I was I was moved by uh, Vikram's story, uh, by what was shared of that, and, and really moved by the level of effort um, uh, from around the world. Uh, I'm uh, 
of an age where I've uh, been practicing for a long time, uh, 32 years. And it's really just in my later years that I've seen the importance of um, giving back on, on projects like this. I, I mean, I like to think I've given back, I've done pro bono work all of my career, but seeing the opportunity to make a difference in a way that helps shape and better the legal profession. Uh, these are the things that I see and place a, a, a new and greater priority on. And so uh, you could say that um, all the stakeholders in uh, the admissions uh, to the bar from Attorney General Chambers Law Society, Singapore Institute of Legal Education, family of the late Vikram, and the court all came together in this wonderful, you know, unified um, act of solidarity where um, it was honestly, I think, one of uh, the most uplifting moments um, of the year when we did this. And we did this um, in memoriam uh, of Vikram. His name will be forever associated with the first case of its kind where there was a recognition by everyone in the legal system of a fit, proper, worthy, deserving candidate to be called to the bar.